Welcome everyone. This is when I return Mulya. Registration number 20BC1318 from VIT Check. Today, I'll be going to give you some insights about the Nantutet Free Software Suite and been implementing about the project 1 and project 2. Before heading into the implementation, I would like to acknowledge Mr. Abdul Qadir sir, who has been guiding us amazingly in our course of computer architecture and organization for giving us this wonderful opportunity and introducing us to this project which truly widened our horizons in this interesting field. Before heading on to the Nanotetris implementation, I would like to give a brief overview of what Nanotetris is. Nanotetris, or the Elements of Computing System, is a 12-part project system in fundamental computer engineering that steps through the creation of a computer from ground up, starting with the nanologic gates and ending with an operating system capable of running a complicated program like Tetris. Each of the project tackles the next logical step in building a computer called Hack and iterates all our work up to that point. The objective of Nanotetris is to first build a sample computer from the elementary logic gate called NAT and then develop a high level language called Jack built in the compiler and assembler and software hierarchy. It basically plans and optimizes the chip architecture on a computer's workstation using structured modeling formalisms like STL or hardware description language. Moving on, hardware simulator. Since SDL is a hardware description language, the process of writing and debugging HDL programs is quite similar to software development. But instead of using a compiler to translate and test the code, we use the hardware simulator. The hardware simulator is a computer program that knows how to pass and interpret the SDL code and turn it into an executable representation and test it according to the applications of given test script. This is a small snapshot of a hardware simulator which will be working dynamically later. Moving on to the project one. The project one is all about the logic gates. In this, we implement various log basic logic gates like AND gate, NOT gate, OR, XOR, and other complex like multiplexer, demultiplexer, and chain those together to implement their multi bit variants like AND16, OR16, and MUX16, and as well as their multi-way variants like MUX4-way, MUX8-way 16, OR8-way, DMUX4-way, and DMUX8-way. Before heading on to the AND gate implementation, we, in the NAND factory software, the basic gate that we'll be using as a base is a NAND gate. So what is NAND gate? NAND is not of AND gate. So, Output of an AND gate is complemented at the end to give a NAND gate. So moving on to the AND gate representation. The logical AND function states that two or more events must occur together and at the same time for an output action to occur. This means that if two input pins give the value 1 or 2, then only the output value will be 1 or 2. Hence the output will be false. In this course we will be implementing these gates using a NAND gate as a base. So this is an AND gate pictorial representation which will be most often referred in picture logic design course. And this is the truth table for the AND gate. So if it is if an input is 0 and 0 then the output is 0, the input is 0 and 1, the output is 0, the input is 1 and 0, the output is 0. If both the inputs are true, then the output is true, else the output is false. That's what an AND function looks like. How do we implement it using a NAND gate? So this is a pictorial representation of implementation of an AND gate using a NAND gate, wherein we pass an input A and B. So in this case, here, in this stage, we get the output as A dot B, the whole bar. And then we take the NOT function on the thing. That is, A dot B the whole bar is passed here, A dot B the whole bar is passed here. And when we AND it, we get A dot B the whole bar and the complement of that. So the final output would be A dot B. So let's go to the implementation part of the AND gate. So the implementation, firstly, 
you'll be downloading the Lang Detector Software Suite, which will give you, which will download a zip file folder with two subfolders called as Project and Tools. The Tools folder to implement all the load, all this SGL code and uh, test your scripts. You need to run this hardware simulator. The hardware simulator is a Windows batch file which will run only if you have a Java pre installed in your system. Hence, it will flash an error saying that .java w file is not found. Hence, make ensure that you have Java pre installed in your system. And you have a projects folder wherein you can implement all your projects like AND gate, OR gate, DMUX, and so on. Will be a structured representation having all the projects in this course. So moving on to the implementation of an AND gate. So this is the icon to load a chip. So let's click on this and load our AND gate, which is in the project one folder. So loading the AND gate, which is an AND.hdl file. HDL means hardware description language, and load the chip. So we get the code done here and the code is similar to the pictorial representation that we have seen before. We use the two NAND gates, pass A and B and the output we get it as A dot B the whole bar and we not that function. That is pass the same thing twice as an input and get the output as A dot B. So test this file will load the test script. This icon is the one to load the test script. We go and choose and.tst file and load the script. To increase the speed of the testing, we can increase the speed and the fast mode, which I prefer a lot. It saves time. So we're all fine, we're all set. We just run the code. So this is the icon to run your code. So we see that a comparison has ended successfully and let's check out these are the input pins the output pins and the internal pins and these values get dynamically replaced or swapped with the latest test case so the latest test case was one and one the one and one the output is one and hence like that it happens so to just check the output of the file let's click on the output here that is it's zero and zero the output is zero zero and one the output is zero 1 is 0, the output is 0, and 1 and 1, the output is 1. If and only if both the values are true value, then the output is true value, else the output is false. To compare it with the, we have a compare provision where we can compare with pre or compiled output. So there's no discrepancy here, hence it means that our code is working perfectly fine. Moving on to the next gate, that is the OR gate. The logical law function states that an output action will become true if either one or more events are true. That means if either of the two inputs are true, then the output value is true. Else, the output value is false. So here, this is the pictorial representation of an OR gate where we have passing two inputs and get an output as an A plus B. So if 0 and 0 is the input, the output is 0. If there is either side, if there is either of the input is 1, then the output is 1. So 0 and 1, the output is 1. 1 and 1, the output is 1. So this, how do we implement it in a NAND gate? So what we do is, we pass A, this is, we consider this as an input A and this as an input B. Pass it, that is, this is a complement function. We get an A bar here. We get a B bar here. When we pass A bar and B bar to a NAND gate, what happens? We get A bar dot B bar, the whole complement. So when applying the De Morgan's law, we get A plus B. That is, break the break the line and change the symbol rule. I hope you may know that. So hence we get an A plus B there. So which is an OR function. Let's go to the implementation of an OR gate. So to implement OR gate, we need to load the OR chip. So we go to this icon, we click on this icon and load our R gate. That's R.HDL and load chip. To test this code, we need to close the load script and go for R.TST and load your script. So here we are using three NAND gates. See, 
the input is A and A to get A complement. Then we are using another NAND gate to get the B complement. And we are using another NAND gate that is A complement and B complement for passing. And we get the output as A and B. So let's test this script. So we click on the run icon. And the comparison has ended successfully. Let's check the output. So if 0 and 0, the output is 0. If either of the input is 1, the output is 1. Looks fine. Let's compare it with the compare file. So when you when you click on compare, what happens? There's a pre-compiled output test that is provided with the NAND to Tetris software suite. And what does this hardware simulator do is compare your generated output with your file that with the pre-compiled file. And if there is any discrepancy, it will show it here. Since there is no disturbance is shown, hence our code is working clearly fine. Going on to the next gate, that is our NOT gate. NOT gates perform the logical invert or the complementation function. The logical NOT function is so called because its output state is not the same as the input state, whereas it is the complement of the input state. So, as you can see, this is the pictorial representation or a diagrammatic representation of an inverter or a NOT gate and this is the truth table. If the input is 0, then the output is 1 and if the input is 1, then the output is 0. So how do we implement using an AND NAND gate? We have used this function on the previous AND and OR gates too. So this is this is the way we are using it. So when we pass A twice, what, do we have to, what does happen in an AND gate? That is a dot a and we know that a dot a a and a is a and when we take the complement of that we get a bar and that's how NAND gate results in a NOT gate functionality so let's go to the implementation of a NOT gate so to implement the NOT gate we need to load the chip so we go to the load chip icon we click on the NOT.HTL load the chip and to test this, we go to the test script and load the not.txt. So the code is similar to the tutorial representation that we saw earlier. That is a NAND gate where we pass the input in both the input pins of the NAND gate and we get the output as a NOT gate. That is a complement function. So let's test, test this script. So we click on the run icon and the comparison has ended successfully. Let's check our output. That is, if the input is 0, the output is 1. If the input is 1, the output is 0. Seems like the NOT gate is functioning very well. Let's compare it to the compare file. And since there is no discrepancy, hence our code is working perfectly fine. Moving on to the next part. That is an XOR gate. An XOR gate is a digital logic gate that gives a true output when the number of true inputs is odd. That means, if in an input, if there are odd number of ones in an input, then only then you get the output as one. If there are even number of ones, then you get the output as zero. So this is a pictorial or diagrammatic representation of an XOR gate, that is exclusive OR gate, and this is the symbol that we use for an exclusive OR. So this is the truth table where we have two inputs and a one output. Here, as you can see, there are no ones. That means there are zero ones, which is even, and hence the output is zero. Here, we can see there is an odd number of ones. There is one one, which is odd, and hence the output is one, similar here. And here, we have two ones, which is even, and hence the output is zero. So, to get, how do we implement this using a NAND gate? Right. So, what happens is, there are two ways. One is the method mentioned here, or you can use this truth table and develop a boolean algebra or boolean function and then you can implement that boolean function using the previous knowledge of and or and not like as in this case we can combine the ones input right as a bar b plus a b bar where we take zero as a and one as a bar so the xor function will be a, equal to the equivalent boolean function would be a bar b plus a b bar so if you implement this you can implement implement this using a NAND gate or a previously built and or a NOT gate then we can easily build an exotic
we'll go to the implementation of an XOR gate. So to implement an XOR gate, we need to load the chip. Go to the project one folder, we load the XOR.STL, we load the chip. And in the code, as you can see, what we wanted as a function was a bar b plus a b bar. And so we need a complement, we need a b complement, where we use the inverter gates and we take a complement and b to get a bar b and we take a and b complement to get a b bar and finally or them together using our functionality. This is our basic code which we derived or drawn the conclusion from the truth table I have shown before. So let's load the test script. The test script is xor.txt. Okay, so we have the test script loaded, we have the code loaded, just run the file. The comparison has ended successfully. Now let's just check the output. If there are even number of ones, the output is zero. If there are odd number of ones, the output is one. The odd number of ones, output is one. The even number of ones, output is zero. Looks fine. Let's compare it with a compare file. There's no discrepancy noticed, hence our code is working perfectly fine. Moving on to the next gate, that is the multiplexer. The multiplexer, shortened to MUX, is a combination of logical circuit designed to switch one of the several input lines through a single common output line. I repeat, one of the several input lines to a single common output line by the application of the control signal. So this is how you represent our MUX. There are various input lines and one of them is selected with a selection input as an output line. So this is a implement uh, this is a diagram of a four cross one MUX. So and this is the truth table. So if the selection input S1 and S0 is 0, 0, then we select I0 as the output. If it is 0, 1, then we select I1 as the output. If it is 1, 0, we select I2 as the output. If it is 1, 1, we select I3 as an output. Let's go to the implementation of a MUX. So let's load our MUX file, that is MUX.SDL. We load the chip. We have implemented the MUX using NOT and two AND gates and an OR gate here. And we'll test the script using loading the max.txt file and load the script. So we are all set. We'll run the code. So we'll recycle. We've seen that the comparison has ended successfully. And we'll just check our output. Um, yes, input is zero. So what happens is, yes. So this is an output of the thing. Let's just compare it with a compare file, and hence, yep, yeah. there's no discrepancy, and hence the code is working perfectly fine. We go to the next thing that is our demultiplexer. The data distributor, known more commonly as a demultiplexer or demux, is exactly opposite of a multiplexer. Where in multiplexer, several input lines were one of them was selected as an output line. Here, one output line will be selected to go in several other individual output lines. Input line will be selected to go in several other individual output lines. The demultiplexer takes one single input data line and then switches to any one of the number of individual output lines one at a time. The demultiplexer converts a serial data at the input to a parallel data. So this is a kind of a two table of a demultiplexer. So if the selection lines is zero and zero, then the data line zero is selected for sending the input one. And if the selection is zero and one, the data bus one is selected. If selection line is one and zero, then the data bus two is selected. If selection line is one and one, the data three, the data line three is selected. And this is the pictorial representation of the demux, where a single input is sent to any one of these output data lines based on the selection input. Let's go to the implementation of a demultiplexer. So to implement the demultiplexer, let's load the chip using a demux.hdl and load this chip here. 
here in the code you can see that we are implementing the demos using a not and a two and gates. We'll go to the load script and load the demos.txt file and load the script. And since everything is on set, we can just run the file. You can see that the comparison has ended successfully. Let's just check the output of the file that is here. And to check whether the output is right or not, we compare the file with already pre-compiled output. So since there is no discrepancy, it seems that our code is working perfectly fine. Going on to the next thing, that is the multi-bit versions. Multi-bit AND is a 16-bit AND gate applies boolean operation AND to every one of the 16-bit pairs arrayed in its 2-bit two 16-bit input buses. A multi-bit OR, a 16-bit OR gate applies the boolean function OR to every one of the 16-bit pairs arrayed in a two 16-bit input buses. So what happens is in a normal AND and OR gate, the AND operation was applied on a single bit. Here what happens? The AND operation or the OR operation is applied to a stream of 16 bits. All the bits are applied these op boolean operations and checked for implementation. So this is the pictorial representation of an AND 16 and an OR 16. Let's go to the implementation of an AND 16 and an OR 16. So we load the chip of an AND 16 first. We load the chip. Yes. As you can see, there are two input buses of 16 bit length, that is A, A, A and B, and the output is also 16 bit. So, what we do, we apply the Boolean function AND on each and every bit, that is A of 0 and B of 0, A of 1 and B of 1, and put it to the corresponding output as out of 0 or out of 1. And we do this to A of 15, so 16 bit range, right? So, we then we can load our test script, that is AND16.txt and load the script here since we are all set um, we run the script as you can see the dynamic values of each test case gets updated here on input pins and output pins and around to internal pins and since the comparison has ended successfully let's check the output that is here so 0 and 0 the output is 0 0 and 1 the output is 0 1 and 1 the output is 1 and here alternate bits are 0 and 0 and hence the output is 0 here so and function is like if both the inputs are 1 only then the output is 1 and hence the corresponding output is obtained you go to the compare file to check output as there is no discrepancy you can successfully claim that our code is working perfectly fine we'll go to the next chip that is an R16 chip uh, or 16 dot sdn we load this chip in here also similar to the and 16 we apply the boolean, fun boolean function or to each and every bit in a two 16 input buses that is a and b and generate an output out so we are applying or function to a of 0 and b of 0 and generating out of 0 a of 1 and b of 1 and generating out of 1 and at the end we are giving the output out itself is the output so we just go to the we load the test file that is r16.txt and load the script so this is a script this is a code these are the input pins that is a and b that is a 62 16 input 16 bit buses the output is also a 16 bit let's just run this file the comparison has ended successfully let's just check the output of the file 0 or 0 is 0 0 or 1 is 1 because in a 1 uh, or functionality what does it say if either of the input is true then the output is true if both the inputs are false then only then the output is false and hence this is the corresponding output let's check it with a compare file and there is no discrepancy noticed hence the code is working perfectly fine Going on to the next gate or the multi-bit version that is a multi-bit multiplexer 
a 16 bit multiplexer is exactly the same as the binary multiplexer described except that the two inputs are each 16 bit point. So this is similar to and or the MUX functionality is applied to each bit, each single bit is of a 16 bit input. So we'll go and implement the not 16 which we forgot earlier and also the MUX 16 too. So we go here and we implement the not 16 first. The not 16 here we apply the not functionality to each and every input bit that is in 0, in 1, input is a 16 bit array and the output is a 16 bit array. We apply the not functionality on each and every 15 bit, 16 bits and generate an output. So we just load the script that is the not 16.txt. Load the script. So we have we are all set. We have a code here, we have a test script here. We just run the file. The comparison has ended successfully. Let's just check the output of the file. So zero, if you have not gate is an inverter gate. So if you have an input zero, then the output will be one. If you have an input one, then the output will be zero. So in this case, zero, all zeros, all one, all one, all zeros. Alternate zeros and one, one. Okay. Looks fine, looks proper for me. Let's just compare with the compare file. Okay. So since there is no discrepancy in the output, our code is working perfectly fine. Moving on to the next step, that is our MUX16, which we have discussed earlier. We load the MUX16 chip, and as you can see, there are two inputs that is just a input bus of 16 bits and a B input bus of 16 bits, and a selection input. And the output is also of a 16 bit. Here, what we do is similar to AND, OR, and NAND, uh, AND, OR, and NOT multi bit versions. We apply the same MUX functionality to each and every bit. And generate a uh, corresponding output. So we go and load the test script for this thing that is the mux16.txt and load the script. So we have a test script ready to, for testing. Now we run the script. So it takes some time. Ah, yeah. Comparison has been successful. Now let's check our output. So this is our output and we compare it to the compare file and since there is no discrepancy at all in our output it seems that our code is working perfectly fine going on to the next thing that is a multi-way version of a basic gate a multi-way or an 8-way or gate outputs one when at least one of its 8-bit input is one and zero otherwise. A multi-way or a multi-bit multiplexer and m-way n-bit multiplexer selects one of m n-bit input buses and outputs it to a single n-bit output line controlled by the selection line. So this is the basic uh, description of the MUX 4-way 16 and a MUX 8-way 16 and this is how a MUX 4-way 16 looks like. And we have four 16 bit inputs and a one 16 bit output with a two bit selection input. Two bit selection input because two to power two inputs are there here. So hence two bit selection input. Okay. So what happens is if the selection input is zero and zero, A is selected as the output. If it is zero and one, the B is selected as the output. If it is one and zero, C is selected as the output. And if it is one and one, the T is selected as the output. We'll go to the implementation of or way or multi way and mux mux multi way versions. Okay, let's load our first or eight way or sdl file, and this is our or eight way. So I'll explain you the code now in a minute. Um, let's load our test file before that or eight way dot txt. So how does an or eight way work? So if you have an 8-bit string and if either of the bit has 1, then the output should be 1. So what we do is from the last bit, we apply the OR functionality to the next bit. And if at all we encounter 1, the output will be 1. And next, whatever the output comes, we get the output as 1 only because we have at least 1 in the input. So this is how the OR functionality is applied. So we apply an OR with in of zero, input of zero and input of one, and the out with the output of A we continue 
to the input of 2, we OR it to the input of 2. With that output, we OR it to the input of 3 until we get the last 8 bit. And hence, we get the output. So that will be better understood when we look at the output. So we'll run the file. So the comparison has ended successfully. We'll just check our output once. Yes, as you can see, in this first case, there is no 1. Hence, the output is 0. In the second case, the, all the bits are 1. Hence, the output is 1. In the third case, there is this is the fifth bit that is 1. And hence, the output is 1. What happens? 0 or 0 is 0. 0 or 0 is 0. 0 or 0 is 0. 0 or 1 is 1. 1 or 0 is 0. 1 or 0 is 0. 1 or 0 is 1. or 0 is 1. Sorry, my bad. 1 or 0 is 1, 1 or 0 is 1, and 1 or 0 is 1, and hence the output is 1. And similarly, if at all you have 1 in the whole bit stream, then you get the output 1, else you get the output 0. Let's compare it with the compare file. And yep, since there is no discrepancy, output is working perfectly fine. We'll go to the next thing that is our mux 4 way 16 and a mux 8 way 16. Let's load the mux 4 way 16 file. There are four input lines A 16 bit input, B 16 bit input, C 16 bit input, and D 16 bit input, and a selection that is a 2 bit input. So we are using the 3 mux 16 here, and the code is as follows. We'll load the test script here, the mux 4 way 16. We'll load the script, and this is our mux 4 script. We have a code here, we have a script here, all set. Let's run the file. Take some time. Yep, comparison has ended successfully, and the dynamic values that were updated upon testing here in input pins, output pins, and the internal pins. Let's check our output here. Output is yep. So output looks so pretty complicated. Let's check with the compare file whether it's right or not. Okay, since there is no discrepancy, this code is working perfectly fine. Let's go to the next thing that is our mux 8 way 16 when we will have 8 inputs and that is A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H has 8 16 bit inputs and for 16 bit 8 inputs we need selection 3 bits so what happens is we, uh, how is it selected like 8 can be written as 2 to the power 3 the power of the 2 is selected as a selection bit so here for this purpose we use 6 mark 16 and hence we get generate the output so we'll load the test script that is the mux 8 way 16.txt we'll load the script and this is the test file we'll be checking for all the input cases and output cases this is the input pins these are the output pins that is out 16 and these are the internal pins that i used for the operation that is q r s t y n z let's run the file as we are all set we'll run the file take some time and yeah comparison has ended successfully Let's check our output. So the output is something like this. And we'll check compare it with the pre-compiled compare file. And since there is no discrepancy, it seems that our code is working perfectly fine. Moving on to the next thing. Okay, we have implemented almost like mux multi bay variants because the presentation. A M way N bit demultiplexer channels a single n bit input into one of the possible m m possible n bit input to one of the n possible n bit outputs so this is the demux where you select a uh, input will be a 16 bit input will be passing through any one of these 16 outputs so this is one plus four and similarly the selection bit is zero and zero the input will pass to the data line zero the selection bit is zero and one the input will pass to the data line one the selection bit is one and zero the input will pass in the data line two the selection bit is one and one the input will pass to the data line three so we'll go ahead on to the implementation of the dmux multi-way version we go to the hardware simulator we go to load the chip that is dmux four way we load the chip and we are using three mux here similar to the mux or mux multi bit version multi bay version that we get and uh, wherein we will have a input that is a single input and a four output channel 
and the truth table is kind of mentioned here right so you can interpret you can interpret it here really easily if selection input is 0 and 0 the first one will be passed in the first data line then corresponding in the second third and the fourth so this is the code let's load the test script that is the demo 4 way.tst we'll load the script all set let's um, run the file it will take some time yep comparison has ended successfully these are the input pins output pins a b c and d the internal pins a o and b o let's check our output that is for an input 0 doesn't matter but if for an input 1 if the selection input is 0 and 0, the output goes to an A line. If the selection input is 0 and 1, the output goes to the B data line. And the selection input is 1 and 0, the output goes to the C data line. And if the selection data is 1 and 1, the output goes to D data line. This is how the DMUX works. Just compare the file to check our output again. And since there is no discrepancy, our output is working perfectly fine. Our code is working perfectly fine. Let's move on to the next multi-way version that is the dmux 8 way where it will have 8 output gates that is a single input a selection bit will be 3 since 2 to the power 3 outputs are there that is 8 a b c d e f g and h are the output data lines and we are using 6 or 7 mux here dmux here similar to the mux multi-way what we have done so we load the test script so that is our dmux gateway.txt file we we'll load the script here and um, this is the test script which will be testing for each and every case hence yep, we have everything set we will run our code it takes some time and the comparison has ended successfully let's check our output our output yes so this is a dmux output what's happening is in the selection is 0 0 0 the output is passed in the data line 1 in the selection is 0 0 1 the output is passed in data line b the selection is 0 1 0 the output is passed in data line c and so on if the selection is data 1 1 1 the output is passed to the last data line that's 8 data line this is how a dmux multi wave works let's go on to the next thing that is a project 2. The centerpiece of the computer architecture is a CPU or the central processing unit. And the centerpiece of the CPU is an ALU, that is, the arithmetical logic unit. In this project, we will gradually set up our chips culminating in the construction of the ALU chip of the hack computer. All the chips built in the previous project are standard and except for the ALU itself, which differs from one computer, computer architecture to another. ALU differs from different computer architectures. The first one is a half adder. Adder is a digital circuit that performs an addition of numbers. In many computers and other kinds of processors, adders are used in arithmetical logic units or ALU. They are also used in other parts of the processor where they are used to calculate addresses, table indices, increment and decrement operator and similar operations adders you can think of a practical implementation that is um you know you know about the program program counter wherein when comparing the code if you have to go to the next ed line you need to go to the next address right next address in the memory and half adder can be used as an incrementer in that purpose so what basically in a half adder does adding binary numbers is to be able to add Two bits. Let us just call the least significant bit of the addition as sum and the most significant bit as the carry. So this is a basic truth table or the table of the half adder. These are the two inputs A and B and the outputs are sum and carry. So how do we generate the output? 0 plus 0 is sum is 0 and the carry is 0. 0 plus 1 sum is 1 and the carry is 0. 1 plus 0 sum is 1 and the carry is 0. 1 plus 1 the sum is 0 and the carry is 1 and from these you can generate the boolean function that is a bar b plus a b bar which is similar to the XOR function that we had learned before so sum will be representing an XOR function similarly carry we go carry we have 1 here and the corresponding boolean function would be a b that is an AND gate 
the sum will be represented by an XOR function and a carry will be represented by an add function and that's the pictorial representation happening here we have a two inputs A and B and the AND will give you the carry and an XOR will give you the sum we'll head on to the implementation of an half adder so for the implementation of an half adder we need to load the chip and first of all it's in the new directory that is the project 2 and here we load the half adder.hdl file so as, as mentioned before the sum will be the XOR function and the carry will be the AND function here in the code also it resembles the same yep so here we have two input pins that is A and B the output pins are sum and carry and let's load the test script to check out half adder.txt file we load the script and we are all set we'll run the file comparison has ended successfully let's check the output yes so 0 plus 0 the sum is 0 and the carry is 0 0 plus 1 the sum is 1 and the carry is 0 1 plus 0 the sum is 1 and the carry is 0 1 plus 1 the sum is 0 and the carry is 1 looks fine let's check it with the compare file so there's no discrepancy hence our half adder.hdl is working perfectly fine let's go to the next part full adder in the half adder used to add two bits but the full adder is designed to add three bits like the half adder case the full adder chip produces two outputs the least significant bit of the addition is sum and the most significant bit as the carry the full adder chip basically this is the table of a full adder where we have three inputs and two outputs that is sum and a carry so how, how is an output generated 0 plus 0 plus 0 the sum is 0 and the carry is 0 0 plus 0 plus 1 the sum is 1 and the carry is 0 1 plus 1 plus 0 the sum is 0 and the carry is 1 1 plus 1 plus 1 the sum is 1 and the carry is 1 so this is a pictorial representation of how we can implement a full adder using two half adders so what we Basically, a full address is the addition of three bits. So these are the two bits which will be passing through a half adder, and the sum that we get will be an input to the next half adder. The sum that we get will be an input to the next half adder, and the third bit that we are going to be add will be the other input in the second half adder. And the carry of the first half adder and the carry of the second half adder will be odd and will be odd and then the result will be taken as a final carry and the sum from the second half adder is considered as a final sum so this is the basic implementation of a full adder using two half adders we'll be doing the same we'll be going for the implementation now let's go to the implementation we go and load the chip that is the full adder we load the chip we are using two half adders and a one or gate so half adder, the first half adder, we are passing the inputs A and B and the sum we'll get is as AB and the carry will be uh, and we get the carry and the second input we are passing C and the sum obtained in the first half adder and we get the sum and the carry and the, the carry of the first thing, uh, first half adder and the carry of the second half adder is added uh, I mean odd and then you get the output as a carry so this is the basic explanation of the code here so there are three input pins and the two output pins that is sum and a carry and now uh, let's load the script for the full adder.txt full adder.txt this is the script all set everything is fine let's run the script so the comparison has ended successfully let's check our output and we have three input gates and two output that is sum and the carry so 0 plus 0 plus 0 sum is 0 and the carry is 0 0 plus 1 plus 1 the sum is 0 and the carry is 1 fine 1 plus 1 plus 1 the sum is 1 and the carry is 1 let's check the output with the compare file yes there is no discrepancy hence our code is working perfectly fine moving on to the next thing that is a add 16 memory and register chips represent integer number by n bit patterns n being 16, 32, 64 and so forth depending on the computer platform the chip whose job is to add such numbers is called multi-bit adder or simply adder 
is add add 16 is designed to add two 16 bit numbers and add 16 is implemented either using one half adder and 15 full adders or it can be completely implemented using 16 full adders so this is the basic implementation or this is the diagram of an adder 16 adder where we are adding two 16 bit inputs so how we are adding we are we can use the full adders 16 full adders and the first input will be a false input which will resemble nothing and when we add a and b this the sum will be the output and the carry will be passed to the next full adder and the a1 and the b1 bit is added and with the carry one and we get the sum and the carry will be moving on till the 16th adder and hence we are being obtained obtaining the output as the sum and let's go to the implementation of an add 16 now okay let's load the add 16 add 16 here in this implementation we are using half adder and 15 full adders there we have used 16 full adders wherein the first input was false here we didn't take care of that case what we do we add those two inputs and we take the sum as an output and pass the carry to the next full ladder. Similarly, we have all the implementation as I explained previously. And um, there are two 16 bit inputs and a one 16 bit output. And these are the internal pins that I used in the code. Let's go and load our test script that is add16.txt and load the script. This is our test scripts. And let's run a file and the comparison has been successfully let's go to the script check our output so 0 plus 0 is 0 0 plus 1 is 1 1 plus 1 is and yep the last bit is added and we get 1 plus 1 is 0 and the carry is 1 and so on and looks fine for me let's go to the compare file there's no discrepancy hence our output and the code is clearly fine going on to the next thing that is our increment of 16 it is convenient to have a special purpose chip dedicated to adding the constant 1 to a given number. Here is a specification of a 16 bit incrementer which can be used in a program counter or the address can be incremented helping in the compiling process. So it is implemented using 16 half adders or using a single add 16 chip. So we will be obviously going for a simpler method that is using a single add 16 chip. So what happens? A constant 1 is taken as one input and then input 0 as the another the sum then the carry is taken as a second input in the second half adder and the input 1 and so on till the input 15. We go to the implementation of an increment of 16. We load the increment of 16 file, load the chip and we have the input as in and the output as out. We use a single add 16 where we are passing a as an input and we are making b of 0 as 2. That means that is you are adding a single constant 1 and you get the output as out. So there is a single input pin, there is a single output pin. We just load our test script that is our increment 16.txt. Load the script and all is set. Let's run the file and we take some time. Comparison has ended successfully. We check our output that is increment of 0 and when we add 1 the last bit becomes 1 and 1 when we add 1 what happens 1 plus 1 is 0 carries 1 1 plus 1 is 0 carries 1 and so on 0 0 0 0 1 0 1 okay so when we add 1 here the sum is 0 the carry is 1 it will be like 0 1 1 0 yep answer is fine I think the output is completely fine we we'll go and compare compare file and since there is no discrepancy, our uh, add increment of 16 is working perfectly fine. Let's go to the next thing that is an ALU, the heart of the computer. An arithmetical logical unit is a combinational digital electronic circuit that performs an arithmetic and a bitwise operation on an integer binary numbers. This section describes an ALU and later becomes the centerpiece or the control of a specific computer platform called Hack. It is implemented using a set of basic logic gates as well as their multi-bit and multi-way variations. So this is our ALU 
diagram where we are having two inputs x and y and these are the operations that are going to be performed and this is the output that will be happening that will be resulted in let's go to the implementation of an ELU so let's load our ELU load chip and as mentioned before we'll be using a combination of mux and, and basic gates and the multivariate tool to implement our ALU. These are the input pin that is X and these are the operations to check out which operation we want to select and so on. And these are the outputs and these are the internal pins that I used in the code. Let's go to the test script and load the ALU.txt file and then we have both the code and the script loaded. We we'll just run our file. It takes some time and the comparison has ended successfully. Let's check our output. The output is pretty complicated. Let's compare it directly with our compare file. And since there is no discrepancy in our file or uh, the code, then the code is working perfectly fine. We move on to the next slide that is an abstract of the conclusion slide. In a nutshell, NAND Tetris is a typical structural computer engineering course that steps you through the creation of a computer from the ground up from the basic root level to higher fundamental levels. So we have discussed about the implementation of the project 1 and the project 2 successfully. I would like to conclude this presentation here. If you find this video very informative, please do like this video and share as much as possible. Thank you. Thanks for watching.